One is three foot six, shaped like a dustbin, seen in every Star Wars film, and so vulgar that every line of dialogue gets bleeped out for him. That's right, it's our very favourite droid friend, R2-D2. Surviving the Clone Wars, the Galactic Civil War, and the conflict with the First Order, he is arguably the MVP of the Skywalker saga. Always around to help get his friends out of trouble, and ready with a cheeky quip. Hi, I'm Tom, welcome to Planet Mithril, and boy have I got a tutorial today that will make you go... That's right, today I'm bringing you my take on this new Star Wars Shatterpoint miniature R2-D2. Now I know what you're all thinking. Wait, is this just an R2 video? There's usually a duo, C-3PO and R2-D2. You very rarely see one without the other. Don't fret hobbyists, C-3PO will be out on Sunday in his own separate painting tutorial. I wanted to give both droids the care and attention that they both deserve, rather than sticking them in one long video and rushing the process for both. And the biggest and most daunting part of R2-D2 is the significant amount of white that makes up most of the model. Getting this crisp, smooth and clean to represent this metallic casing can prove quite challenging. What I've done here is simplified the entire process down to a very basic recipe, but one that yields great results. Combining this with the vibrant blue as a spot colour and the dulled down gold for the Bar 2D2 variant I'm painting today will give you a droid you'll be happy to put on the tabletop. My R2-D2 was assembled and primed using Mechanica Standard Grade and I'll be using the Scale Colour range of paints with a few Citadel washes to get the work done today. Okay, okay R2, sorry, sorry, sorry. You heard him guys, brush is ready and let's get painting. The most crucial stage early on is really nailing that base tone of white to the main body of R2. I don't want this to be too bright as I don't want to limit my maneuverability later on when it comes to the highlights. I'm going to start off my R2 by applying a fairly liberal base coat of NACAR. This off-white paint will hopefully help with two things. It will cover over easier than a pure white wood at this stage and it will give me a slightly darker base coat to build off later on. A quick mithril tip here, you can add in a very very small spot of dark grey or brown here if you want just to aid the coverage uh, of white over the model. But I stress here, don't add too much because you don't want to lose the tone of the white we're building up right now. Regardless of whether you do or don't here, multiple thin down coats will probably need to be applied just to get a nice smooth consistent finish. Now I've got my base coat in place and it's looking super smooth and crisp, I've got to try and create some definition and depth between all the panelling on Archie's body. To achieve this, I'm going to apply a heavily diluted all over wash of petroleum grey. And I'm really going to be working this in between all the ridges and edges to try and build up some depth. You can see I'm applying this quite liberally over the model, but trying to move it around enough to try and minimise the risk of pooling once it's completely dried. Now these next two stages, although fairly simple, can be quite time consuming, so make sure you don't rush. It's important now that we try and rebuild up that tone now that you can see that the petroleum wash has dried. You can see now how the grey is sitting between all the grooves of the panelling, which is exactly what I was looking for. Now I'm going to be going back over the whole main body and legs again using my NACAR base mix, but now I'm looking to be a lot more targeted and precise, framing the individual compartments, edges and inners and blocking out some of the more blocky panels, trying my best to leave as much of the grey showing in all the recesses. Now I did have a reference picture up so I knew which panels to leave bare for the blue, but it's not really too much trouble just to go over all the panels here to make your life that little bit easier later on. Awesome, now you can see my R2 is really starting to come together and you'll be grateful to know there's only one more stage of white paint left. <sighs> For the final stage of the main casing, I'm going to be applying an extreme edge highlight using pure white. As you can see, I'm carefully just tracing around the edges of all the panels and ridges, trying my best to maintain a thin, precise point to my brush for the best application. With the tone of the casing built back up to the NACAR, 
you should find that this covers super smoothly without too much issue. However, you may find that multiple passes might just make it pop that little bit more. Again, this can be time consuming, but it really pays here to spend the time being as accurate as you possibly can be. Hooray! Archer D2's body is finally done! Now that the bulk of the hard work on Archer's main body is done, it's time to start defining some of those other features to really bring him to life. Or online? Before I tackle any of the metals, I'm going to just go back over the main casing and carefully pick out any panels and details there that are going to be either silver or blue. Now this isn't strictly necessary, but I found that it just helps to unify the tone a little bit more than painting straight onto the white underneath. I did have a reference picture up again to try and be as accurate to the films as possible, but feel free to let Creative License take over. After all, the more blue the better. It is nice now not to be working with greys and white, I can tell you that. It's time to get the metallic base coats in place now, and to do this I'm going to be using thrash metal and giving the whole dome the armature coming out the top of his head and picking out specific details over the body and legs. namely the grates in the centre of his chest, the fans on the front and back at the bottom, and any other bolts and rivets that look like they've been made of metal. It's time to apply my shades to all the metal. To do this, I'm going to apply a fairly liberal shade using Citadel's Nulm Oil. Much like I did with the main body, work this towards the grooves and recesses over all these areas. With the dome in particular, I want to define the compartments which are going to end up blue, and just slightly tone down the sheen on the crest of the metallic surface. Okay, cool. Yeah, you can see how the metals are really nicely toned down now, and have that characteristic Star Wars grimy look, if that's a term I can start using here. I mean, it is a used galaxy after all. Now I just want to make these metals pop a little bit more and just add a smidge of extra sheen to them. To do this, I'll be applying a fine edge highlight to all the edges and ridges of metals using Speed Metal. This is quite bright, so it should just help pick out all the edges and give that little extra glint of light that I'm looking for. The dome gets a slightly different treatment. I'm going to be applying a slightly thicker band just around the main crest of the curve just to help simulate where the light will be bouncing off all the round reflective surface. In preparation for the blue panel stages, you can see here that I went round the dome once again and just picked out all the panelling again using petroleum grey, much like I did on the main body. Again, this is just to help get a uniform look across all the blues, but I didn't necessarily think you needed that stage all over again. Now for the super fun stage, and you're going to start to see r 2 coming together really, really quickly here. It's time to get that characteristic rich blue colour in place on our little droid pal here. All the remaining greyed out panels over the body, legs and the dome now were very carefully picked out using Mediterranean blue. When tackling the body panels, please be extremely careful here Clipping finished white with a bright blue isn't something that's easy to undo or reverse at this stage. You can see all the panels down the front and back, the panels around the surface and the top of the dome and the size of the legs are areas to focus on in particular. Just look at how quickly that blue brings Artu's character to life. Absolutely stunning. 
I then continued building up the tone of the blue a little bit more by applying a layer using sky blue. Here I'm just looking to define the more intricate panels a little bit more and provide a mid-step between the base paint and the highlight that's yet to come. Right, now it's time for the highlight stage and the last bit of major work on R2 himself. I went around all the blue panelling now using Here All Blue and I'm just picking out all the edges of the blue panels here, trying to keep my highlights as tight and thin as I can to really let that subtle progression from the richer dark blue through to the much lighter highlight stage show through. You can use a mix of sky blue and white here if you wanted a slightly more stark edge highlight. Personally, I found that Here All worked perfectly well, but feel free to experiment should you wish. There we are, that's the little droid we all know and love. Now just some finishing touches and that's the majority of R2-D2 for this particular sculpt finished. I carefully picked out all the lenses now using a coat of pure black. There are three on the front with the dome and two on the reverse, as you can see here. To give them a little bit of quick and easy detail, a razor thin line of NACAR was traced over the upper and lower of the larger main lens, as well as a dot highlight applied to the upper of the smaller lenses. This will just give a very subtle look of reflective glass which I'll define further in just a mo. The singular lens that sits directly underneath the large main lens was then very carefully picked out using blood red. And again, as with the black lenses, a quick dot highlight was applied, this time using tear matte orange. All the lenses were then finally finished off with a quick targeted coat of Citadel Gloss Varnish, or Art Coat, which when dry will give all the lenses a super shiny look. Now there are just a few cables on the front of the foot cups which need picking out, and that's R2 himself done. I carefully picked these out using brown leather. followed by a quick layer just to separate them out a bit more using Gobi Brown. Now if you've assembled your R2-D2 without the mobile R on his head, then this tutorial is probably done for you now, but I wanted to cover all bases, if you'll pardon the hobby pun, and paint up Bar2-D2 now as he was on Jabba's Salvage, with the bar on his head. The entire tray and cup on the side was given a solid, thorough base coat now, using Necro Gold. This has a slightly off-gold, almost greeny tinge to it, which I think suits the scenario extremely well. Make sure you get in all the grooves, gaps, and the entire underside for a smooth, consistent finish. All the gold now was given a thorough shade using Citadel, Mortari, and Grime. This is a greeny brown wash which will achieve the look I want without risking overwhelming the tone with two separate washes. Again, manoeuvring this into all the grooves and gaps to shade as much of the intricate gold detail as possible. When this was dry, a fine edge highlight was applied over all the gold using citrine alchemy. Quite a stark jump in tone I grant you, but this will really make the golds pop against all the greys, whites and silvers below. The hose attaching R2 to his drink dispenser was then carefully picked out using blood red. And given a quick layer just to the upper curvature using Antares red.
Couldn't have said it better myself, R2. You're looking mighty fine, fresh off the assembly line, and ready to unleash your brand of droid-based shenanigans upon a galaxy. You can see now how the blue really pops against the more monotonous tones of the whites and silvers, and tied together with the beaten manky gold from Jabba's Palace, you have an R2 unit that has been lifted directly from the scene and placed on your gaming table. For basing advice, please head over and check out my Star Wars Shatterpoint basing tutorial, and don't forget to tune in on Sunday for the other half of this dynamic duo, C3PO. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe, and hit that bell for video notifications. And as always, guys, happy beeps and happy hobbying.